Today is Friday, May 10th. What to know about trade talks with China and how they could impact what you buy. And the Pope's groundbreaking new law. Plus Uber's IPO, a new way to get to the moon, and a free babysitter on Mother's Day. Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Trade talks will continue today between the world's two largest economies, the U.S. and China. But so far, no deal. And no trade deal means new tariffs starting today. As of 12.01 a.m., the U.S. is hiking tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. Remember, President Trump has been threatening to put these new taxes in place all week. He said negotiations with China were moving too slowly. And now he's following through, even as the two countries are still going back and forth. Reuters reports the higher taxes will impact things like vehicle parts and machinery, as well as some consumer goods, like furniture, handbags, and some electronics. Although it could take months before you might actually have to pay more for some of those goods coming from China. That's not all, though. The Wall Street Journal reports the president now says he's also starting the paperwork to move forward with even more levies, hitting pretty much everything China sells to the U.S., and affecting even more consumer products. The journal says it could impact things like iPhones, laptops, and clothing. Already, China says it'll retaliate, which at least in the past has targeted the U.S. farming industry. All this uncertainty is also hurting the stock market. Stocks closed down yesterday, and the AP says the S&P 500 is on pace for its worst week of 2019. For now, trade talks do continue, so we'll see how long these higher tariffs last. To be continued. President Trump is ready to nominate his pick for Secretary of Defense. The Washington Post says he's chosen Patrick Shanahan, who is the acting defense secretary right now. He previously worked under Jim Mattis before Mattis stepped down last year. There's already been a little bit of controversy with Shanahan, though. He's been accused of favoring the company Boeing while at the Defense Department. Boeing is his former employer. But he's now been cleared of any wrongdoing. Still, some critics say Shanahan doesn't have enough government experience for this job. He spent a lot of his career in the private sector. But others say he's proven he's up to the task over the last several months. The AP reports Shanahan has dealt with things like North Korean missile launches and issues in the Middle East. But he still needs the Senate to confirm him. Alabama could pass the nation's strictest abortion ban as soon as next week. If it does go through, it means doctors could spend up to 99 years in prison for giving someone an abortion. The Washington Post reports if some lawmakers get their way, it would even ban abortions in cases of rape or incest. But that caused a lot of heated debate yesterday and pushed the vote out to next week. But here's the thing. Even if the bill passes, it'll probably get blocked by a federal judge. At least some who support the bill would be okay with that. They want to see this issue make its way back to the U.S. Supreme Court. They're hoping to get Roe v. Wade overturned now that there are some more conservative justices on the bench. Of course, Roe v. Wade is the landmark 1973 decision that guarantees a woman's right to an abortion. Alabama is just one of more than two dozen states trying to put new restrictions on abortion laws. Georgia lawmakers voted just earlier this week to ban abortions after the sixth week of pregnancy, before many women even know they're pregnant. Pope Francis just set a groundbreaking new law in his latest effort to stop sexual abuse in the church. NPR says the law requires priests and nuns around the world to report clergy sexual abuse and cover-ups to church authorities and for churches to create an accessible system for people to submit those reports. The law is also meant to protect the people who file them. Abuse victims are calling this new law a step forward, but they say it's not enough. NBC News reports they want to see another requirement to report the abuse to police as well. The Vatican has said that could put the church in danger in places where Catholics are a persecuted minority. If the law is enforced as planned, there could be reports coming in right away. The law says priests and nuns should submit everything, including old cases. Privacy advocates are not happy with Amazon. They argue Amazon's Alexa devices are violating child privacy laws. Business Insider reports 19 different groups are coming together in an effort to get the federal government to look into this. The Echo Dot Kids Edition is a smart speaker that uses Amazon's voice assistant Alexa. While advocates say it hangs on to voice recordings and personal information longer than it should, and that it's difficult for parents to try to delete their kids' info. But Amazon says not true, that the device is compliant with the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act and does not collect personal data. 
It's a big day for Uber. The ride-sharing company is expected to go public today. CNBC says it's bound to be one of the largest IPOs of all time. The company has listed its initial public offering at $45 a share, which is a little lower than expected. But still, even at that price, Uber would have a market value of more than $80 billion. But the company has dealt with its fair share of problems getting to this point, from ousting the co-founder for some missteps and controversy to dealing with driver strikes just earlier this week. By the way, Uber's rival, Lyft, already went public back in March. And since then, TechCrunch says Lyft's stocks have dropped and they're trading for about 20 percent lower than its IPO price. So we'll see how the market welcomes Uber shares today. All right, more news ahead. But first, a quick break for today's sponsor. America's beverage companies are working together to support families as they reduce the sugar in their diets. Coke, Dr. Pepper, and Pepsi are providing more great-tasting options with less sugar or no sugar at all, putting clear calorie labels on every product, and working with public health organizations and other national and local partners to build stronger, healthier communities. With more choices, smaller portions, and less sugar, American families can find the balance that's right for them. Learn more about how these three competitors are working together at balanceus.org. That's balanceus.org. Now back to the news. Facebook's co-founder wants the company to break up, and he's calling on Capitol Hill to make it happen. Chris Hughes founded Facebook alongside the current CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, but Hughes left the company more than 10 years ago. This week, he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. In it, he says Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has too much power and says he has, quote, unilateral control over speech, that Facebook is just too big, and there's no precedent for Zuckerberg or one company to monitor the conversations of two billion people. He wants regulators to step in, and he thinks the merger between Facebook Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp needs to be undone. But Facebook's current leadership disagrees. In a statement, Facebook told The Verge, quote, you don't enforce accountability by calling for the breakup of a successful American company. Zuckerberg is set to meet with government leaders this week to talk about new rules for the Internet. Blue Origin has its eyes on the moon. That's the spaceflight company owned by Amazon founder and the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos. Reuters reports the company just revealed a mock-up of a lunar lander spacecraft. It's called Blue Moon. Blue Moon is the size of a small house and is designed to carry rovers and satellites to the moon. But Space.com says it could take astronauts there as well. Vice President Mike Pence called on NASA to send astronauts to the moon by 2024. Well, Bezos said he can help meet that timeline to take people to the moon in just five years. NASA could potentially become a customer of Blue Origin, paying for trips to the moon. This isn't a new conversation, but it is the first time we've actually seen that lunar lander. And when Bezos unveiled the mock-up, he said, quote, it's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. Delta Airlines is offering free Wi-Fi, but it's only temporary and not for all of their flights, at least not yet. The airline is just testing this idea right now. The Verge says travelers can get free Wi-Fi on 55 domestic flights this month. Even though it's just a test, Delta says it hopes to make this a standard feature in the future. Though rolling out free Wi-Fi is a little more complicated than it sounds. That's because it would likely cause everyone on the plane to use the bandwidth, which could then slow it down for everyone. Right now, JetBlue is the only U.S. airline with free Wi-Fi. Don't forget, Mother's Day is this Sunday, so if you still need a perfect gift for a certain mom, how about just giving her a night off? The food company Kraft wants to help you do just that. CBS News says they're offering up to $100 for a babysitter, one per household. Here's how it works. After the babysitter is paid and out the door, submit the bill to craftmothersdayaway.com. You can do this through May 19th, although keep in mind the company is giving out $50,000 total before it's over. Happy early Mother's Day. And that's it for today. You are all caught up. Thank you so much for listening. And a quick shout out to all the newsworthy insiders. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And if you haven't already, don't forget to reply to my email with your mailing address so I can send you your newsworthy swag. And if you're not an insider yet, you can still sign up. Just find the link in the episode description in your podcast app. And it literally takes 20 seconds to sign up on your cell phone. For any amount you want, starting at just $5 a month, you're showing me how much you appreciate the show, that you want to support it, and you realize that it takes a lot of time and effort with a very small team to put this together. 
Again, just find the link in your app or go to thenewsworthy.com slash insider. I am so grateful to all of you supporting the show, whether you're an insider or you're sharing this episode to help us grow. Thank you so much in advance. All right. As always, if you want to read more about any of the stories we talked about, just go to the homepage of thenewsworthy.com, click episodes and look for today's date. You'll find all the story sources and links right there. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by four in the morning. I'll be back with more news on Monday. Have a great weekend.